What's up, English nerds, and welcome back to mini lesson three of the Craft of Writing series. I'm your host, Miss Nash, aka Nashi, and today we will be looking at an introduction to tricolon. So let's look at what a tricolon is. Tricolon often uses three clauses, ideas, phrases, words in succession within a single sentence. So anything where you see something bunched in threes within a sentence is usually a tricolon. The three elements within a sentence are usually of equal or similar length, and they can be found in a range of different genres. So you might find tricolon in poetry, creative writing, short stories. It's also quite popular in speeches and oral storytelling, and it can be used for both persuasive devices, but also for enhancing the description of a particular piece of writing. So let's move on to some examples of tricolon now, because there's quite a few within the texts of craft of writing. But you'll notice as you start to read more and more that tricolon is quite a common element that you will find in writing. So looking at the first example on the slide here, we have a quote from 1984, which was our prescribed text for the common module text and human experience. And the quote reads, Sometimes he was flung like a sack of potatoes on the stone floor of the cell, left to recuperate for a few hours and then taken out and beaten again. So when you have a look at this sentence, you can see that there are three parts to the description of Winston's torture. We can see the first section is sack of potatoes on the stone floor of a cell. The second part of that sentence is left to recuperate for a few hours. And then the third part is, and then taken out and beaten again. So the sentence breaks down into three things, kind of like three steps in creating the imagery that goes along with what's happening to Winston. Now, if we go and have a look at the second example, A Home in Fiction by Geraldine Brooks, we can see that uh, tricolon is used again, but in a little bit different way. The pale faces lifted towards the weak English sunlight were haggard weary, grief racked. So what you can see here is that the tricolon is more about the descriptive word rather than a a clause or a whole part of a sentence. So haggard, weary, grief racked. Each one of those things enhances the description of the faces here. So now that we know they're pale faces, that they're weak and they look towards the sunlight, but they're also haggard, weary, grief racked. It makes it a little bit of a stronger description. So why use it? There's a few different reasons why you would use tricolon in your writing. The first thing is the equal space given to each idea or phrase helps an audience to understand, um, to absorb the details of the information that's being conveyed by the author. The other option is that it allows for a a complicated or a detailed idea to be broken down into three parts and for the extended detail to be used to build an argument or an explanation, kind of like what we saw in the example from 1984, as it takes the steps, takes you through the steps of Winston's torture. The third reason is that it can be used to emphasize a point of view or to persuade a responder to a particular idea or concept. And I mentioned this earlier, it is a really great persuasive idea as well as being used to explain. Okay, so let's move on to having a go of using tricolon ourselves. What I would like you to do is write an informative paragraph about your favorite meal, and I don't care what that meal looks like, but extra thumbs up if it is a McDonald's cheeseburger. And I would like you to use an example of tricolon in that paragraph. So talk about your favorite meal, but use a tricolon to really sell it to me. Can't wait to see your responses and and see what you come up with. As always, if you want to tag them in the comments below, I would love to hear and read and see what you are coming up with with your use of tricolon. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Have a great day. Be kind to others. I appreciate you. Catch you later, English nerds.